Okay, 11.8 is called spheres. So a sphere, um, well, I think you know what a sphere is. Um, just uh, if I'm, if I were to draw a sphere, it looks a lot like a circle. So what I'll often do is just shade it a little bit. So it looks three dimensional and that's my way of telling you that that's supposed to be a sphere and not a circle. Okay, so here's a sphere. So point C is the center. This has a center just like a circle would. It's just the point at the middle, the point that's equidistant from all the points on the outside. Okay, and then it also has <clears throat> a radius. It's still just the distance from the um, center of the sphere to any point on the outside of the sphere, just like it would be for a circle. Okay, um, <clears throat> this, um, if you were to cut this in half along this um, line that I've got here, this is called a great circle. And that just means it's a circle that's going to cut a sphere exactly in half. Okay, so on this next picture over here, my sphere is cut into two um, congruent halves. And each one of those is called a hemisphere. Just like the northern and southern hemispheres, right? They're half of spheres. Um, but um, it doesn't have to be, you can cut it any direction as long as it's exactly half of a sphere. That's what um, a hemisphere is. So I'll just put that down here exactly half. Okay. All right. So let's get into the surface area of spheres. So um, if, you, uh, uh, if you imagine a baseball and i um, if you were to take out all of the stitches and unfold the two pieces of leather, you would end up with two um, shapes that look kind of like this, right? You get one um, sort of like that, and another sort of like this, and then you could fold them together kind of like so, um, around whatever it is that's in the middle of a baseball or, or a tennis ball has the same kind of a shape, right? And this kind of resembles four different circles. It's not exact, but it's a nice way of remembering what the surface area of a sphere would be. So it's all uh, the surface area is the all of the uh, material on the outside, right? It's the uh, all the shapes making the outside. So it would be these two pieces. So it's roughly four circles. So if you know the area formula for cir circles, then the surface area formula is just going to be four circles. So four pi r squared, right? So you can think of that, yeah, as four circles. Just a nice way to, to remember the surface area formula, okay? All right, so let's try out some examples. Find the surface area of the sphere. So all I really need is the radius, and I do have that here. So my surface area is going to be 4 pi 8 squared. Okay, so I'm going to square the 8 first, and then 4 times 64 is 256. So this would be 256 pi and square inches since it's um, since it is area, okay? Or you can make a decimal approximation by taking 256 times pi, and that would be about 804.2 square inches, okay? So either one of those would work, okay? Um, all right, you can try this next one if you want. Um, it's a little different because they actually don't tell us what the radius is. We always need the radius though, right? So for surface area, we're always thinking four pi r squared. So I need that radius, okay? I don't have it now, but what I do have is the circumference of the great circle, okay? So what I can do with that is find the radius, okay? You have to know the circumference formula is two pi r. So once I know that, I can say, oh, I can say 2 pi r equals 12 pi. Okay, and I want to solve this for um, the radius. So I want to get the r by itself. I'm going to divide both sides by 2 pi. 
Okay, and those pi's are going to cancel on both sides. Those twos cancel as well, so the radius is going to equal six. Okay, it's actually six feet, but I'm about to plug it in there. Okay, so um, then I've got what I need over here. Okay, any of these sphere problems, if they don't tell you the radius, they'll give you enough information to find it. So the radius is always the key. It's really the only important measurement for spheres. Because it's how big the sphere is. Okay, okay so I've got that many. Let's see, we're dealing with feet, so this would be square feet. Or that's about 452.4. Okay, all right, let's move on to the next page. All right, so that's the surface area of spheres. Let's look at the volume of spheres. Okay, so I don't have a nice way, um, a nice anecdote for the volume formula for a sphere, so I'm just gonna lay it out there. It's gonna be 4 thirds pi r to the third. So still involves the radius. This time we, we're looking at volume. So we've got this to the third power and it's four thirds. Okay, that's just what it is. I don't have a, a nice story about why that is, but that's what it is. Okay, so finding the volume over here, I just need the radius, which I have in this problem. Okay, I'm gonna start there. So eight to the third power I'm just putting in the, my, that in my calculator. It's 512. Uh, even if you don't can't do exponents on your calculator, just do 8 times 8 times 8. Okay, and then I'm going to take 4 times 512, which would be 2048. It's still over 3. Okay, and then I'm going to see if it goes in evenly just on my calculator, dividing. It doesn't go in evenly. So um, 2048 divided by 3 is about 682.7. So I could say this is about 682.7 pi. Um, or I could multiply the 682.7 times pi and get about 2144.7. Okay, and for my units on both of these versions of the answer, I've got inches and it's volume, so it's going to be cubic inches. And there we go. Okay. Oh, off screen wheel. Sorry, it's off screen there for a bit. There's what I was talking about. Yeah, I just multiplied the 682 times pi to get that second version. Okay. All right, so there's another problem um, down below this that you can try if you like. Again, it doesn't tell you the radius, but it gives you the circumference of the great circle, so you could find the radius. And this is actually the same sphere from that previous problem. Um, but I'm just going to redo the work anyway. So the circumference formula is 2 pi r. So that means 2 pi r equals 12 pi. Divide by 2 pi. Those pi's cancel, and the radius is 6 six feet to be precise. Okay, and then we've got what we need to find the volume. Um, so four thirds pi r to the third. Six to the third is 216. What am I doing? Okay, four thirds pi times 216, so I'm going to do 216 times 4, comes out to about 864, 216 times 4 is 864, that's still over 3, okay, I'll try dividing by 3, this one does go in evenly, this is 288 pi, okay, so that'd be fine to leave your answer like that, if it doesn't specify, so this is uh, feet to the third power, or a decimal approximation. 
would be about 904.8. Okay. All right, and on to the last page. Place here. Okay. All right. So this time we're given the surface area of a sphere. It's given to us. There's no picture here, but we've got the surface area of a sphere, and we want to find the diameter. Okay. So again, on all of these sphere problems, the radius is always the key. All right, because if I know the radius, um, then I can find the diameter, right? It's just double the radius, okay? So what I'm going to do is think, all right, I've got the surface area of a sphere. There's my surface area. I want to think about the surface area formula. That's the four circles, so 4 pi r squared. And then I was told that the surface area is 20.25 pi. So what I can do is say, set those equal to each other, okay? So I can say 4 pi r squared equals 20.25 pi, okay? And now I'm trying to isolate r, so what I want to do is get r squared by itself first. So the first thing I would do is just let's get the pi's out of the way, because if I divide the whole equation by pi, those are gone. Or you could have just divided by 4 pi right from the beginning too, so because I'm going to divide by 4 right now. So let's see, 22.5 divided by 4. And I'm not going to round this decimal because it's not very long. It only goes that far. And then I'm going to take the square root of that number in my calculator. That comes out to 2.25. So my radius is 2.25. Okay, and then it's real tempting to put a box around that and say that's the final answer. But remember, we're finding the diameter. So I need to double the 2.25. So that would be 450, 4.50, or just 4.5. And our units is, are going to be centimeters. This is the diameter, so it's just in first degree units. So linear distance, okay? You can try the next one if you want. It's kind of similar. It's got a little bit different twist. We're given the surface area again. This time we're looking for the volume. But we're still going to need to find the radius, right? The radius is going to be the key again because I need a, that's all I need to find the volume, okay? So again, I'm going to think, okay, surface area formula. The surface area formula is 4 pi r squared. And then I'm told the, the surface area itself is 576. So then I could, should be able to use this to, um, to solve for the radius. Okay, and it's tempting to say, oh, r squared equals 144, so the radius is 12, but I still got that pi to deal with. Okay, um, so what I have to do is divide by pi. Okay, and so in my calculator, when I do that, it's not going to be um, a nice integer, um, but that's just how it goes. So when I divide 144 by pi, I'm going to get about 45.84. Okay. And then I'm going to take the square root of that number. And the more of the, I didn't write down the whole decimal, but the more of it you use, the better. Until you get to the end of your problem. Got about 6.77. Now I'm ready to find the volume. So my volume is going to be about, it's not exactly because this number is rounded, but something like that. Okay. So. Um, 6.77 to the third power. I'm going to do that exponent first. It's about 310.33, something like that. Okay, I'm going to multiply that by 4, then divide it by 3.
Okay, so I multiply by 4, next dividing by 3. And that's still in pi, which is fine. I could leave my answer like that. So this would be in cubic meters, or you can multiply it out. And that'd be about 1299.9, pretty close to that. Okay, and that is 11.8. That's all I have today. All right, take care. See you next time.